So I've been using Cursor AI for a couple of weeks now, and I have some hard one tips to share with you. If you've discovered this, you've probably downloaded Cursor AI, you've played with it a little bit, and you wanna find out, you know, how do I take it to the next level? Um, so I've been using it to build websites, apps, workflows, and I'm just really impressed. So here's a couple of things that I think will help, you know, speed up your workflow. So first of all is use a popular language. So if you think about it, um, these large language models are trained on the web. They're trained on Stack Overflow. Uh, so you want to pick languages that have a lot of answers and a lot of uh, corpus and data to work from. So JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, you know, those top tier languages and the frameworks that, is, that are associated with those like Next, Django, etc. So that would be my first tip. Next up, you need to plan your project first. So this was always a given. As developers, we're very guilty of jumping straight into a project and starting to code. It's a lovely feedback loop. But actually just taking a little bit of time and using AI to help you in designing out or thinking about your project first is gonna save you a lot in the long term. So for this, I would use traditional paper, I'd use Figma, even some wireframes. These are all free just to get some ideas about how to get started. VO is really good for this, or V0 from Vercel. So basically, it, with a natural language prompt, you can type in some ideas and it will create create a UX or a UI based on Shad CN components, Next.js, React. Um, and it gives you kind of a, a head start in terms of how you might design your app. You can then copy those as a screenshot, paste them into cursor in the chat window, uh, just hit chat, or sorry, hit control L, and you can paste them in there and it will actually create those components for you based on whatever kind of styling you're using uh, from the image that was be, that was uh, inserted. The uh, other thing that's really cool is Eraser. So you can go there and type in the type of uh, app that you're trying to build and it will come up with a database structure that might be suited and you can prompt and iterate from that. You can also do that with ChatGPT or Claude as well to come up with your schemas. So these are just really good starting points to get yourself running first. So next up, I'd use a starter project. So by this, I mean, you want to know the framework, you want to know the components at a high level that you're going to be using to build out your app, your web app, whatever else it is. So here's a popular framework, Next.js for your, um, your, your front end and some of your back end. Then you've got Tailwind to do all the styling. Superbase is a Postgres based database that's quite popular. You can use Clerk for, Clerk for your authentication, how users get in and out of your app and then Stripe, of course, for the payments. Now there's multiple different types of frameworks and setups you can use. You pick your best. I would then either pick one off the web that's got some starting boilerplate, or I would build one out yourself and use AI to do that and save that as a repository that you can then use for other projects once you've got that scaffolding in place. Next up, use one repository. So. By using one repository, your AI is going to have good knowledge of your entire app. That's the back end, the front end, and the database. And when it's making suggestions and actually applying changes, it can do that across the whole app. If you don't have all that context built in there, what's going to happen is it's going to make suggestions that you need to start applying in other locations. And that's fine, but it's going to slow things down a bit. So at the start, when you're on your local host or you're just in development, try and keep it all together. Don't put it out into different microservices unless the AI has context to those. You can always do that at a later point. Next thing I do is I'd set some instructions. There's a great knowledge base called cursor.directory, which was what I would call a load of system prompts for different ways that people build projects. So in these system prompts, you have ideas about, you know, what frameworks you're using, what versions, how you like to code, how you like to work with the AI, what kind of components, what kind of styling, all these kind of things. You create that as a file within your repository and then add that as context in your uh, chat window whenever you're uh, carrying out instructions. Next thing is I would leverage Composer a lot and do it early. So the great thing about Composer is you can have it work on multiple files and it has a wider context. So you can use natural language instructions to tell it what you want and then, you know, add the context of the code base or the particular files and it will start to make suggestions. But what's cool is 
when those suggestions are made, it can actually apply those across multiple files. You'll see in the left hand side, you'll see all these different files appear making and showing the suggestions that it would it would like to make. And then you can open the difference window and then decide to control shift Y or accept each one of those as you go. But what's great is it's got a wider context and it actually works across multiple files. And that's something that's a lot different from other co-pilots that I've seen. So understanding how and when to use context is key. It's kind of easy just to add the entire code base to every request. But if you start to get granular about what files you're adding to the page prompt. So let's say I'm working on uh, page.tsx and there's some other components involved and then there's a schema. I might add those different files together rather than just suggesting the entire code base. I might add reference to some documentation. If you can make the context as, as tight as possible and as focused, you're going to get better responses. But that's not to say as a starting point, just hit control enter, include the whole code base, or just, you know, add code base, you're still going to get good answers. But defining that a little bit better seems to have better results for me. So iterate and commit. As you've used Composer, as you've created out all these different components and pages, and as they start to appear and you're saving them within your project, it gets to a point where it gets a bit trickier to move forward. So I'd start to iterate on smaller basis on different files, watch what you're doing, pay attention to what changes are making. It's very quick to get started to build out a whole code base. But then once you've got multiple dependencies, you need to move a little bit slower, iterate in smaller movements, and then commit often. Sometimes in Composer, you're going to save multiple different files. You might have done it without properly checking what you were doing because you just wanted to move fast. And it can be hard to roll back from that by hitting, you know, control Z. It doesn't work in the same way. So I would say iterate slowly and uh, commit more often so that you can you can roll back as as needed. And based on what I just said a second ago, I would take your time to understand what the, what the AI is doing. Um, have it explain your code as it makes changes. If you don't know what's happening, simply highlight that, open the chat window, ask it to explain exactly what's happening or the flow that's working throughout the app. It's great actually for stepping into other people's code as well to understand it, what the logic is and where everything is located. So great in that sense. So I would have AI explain your code and then also use multiple models. If you're having errors or if you need to troubleshoot and you're not getting the answers that you want, don't be afraid to take the um, error paste it into a different model to see if it has a different training base or different uh, perspective. So hopefully that was helpful. I've got more videos on cursor on my channel and other AI topics. Basically, I'm figuring out how to move as quickly as possible with AI and integrating it into products and businesses. If you like that kind of thing, give me a follow.